Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. Today we have another G.I. Joe toy review for y'all. From the 50th anniversary nonetheless. Today, we're looking at this really cool set here featuring the Foe Striker and the Cobra Balisic. Balis... Basilisk. However you say that word. Balisic. Basilisk. Basilisk. There we go. Basilisk. Uh, anyways, this is a very cool looking set. We're going to turn around to the back here. Uh, this one actually came out during SDCC as a uh, exclusive set. Uh, this is the actual retail set that we're looking at today. Um, the exclusive set from SDCC actually had two additional figures with it. Uh, it's a little hard to come by though, so... We're going to take a look at this one and try to figure out if the SDCC version is worth the additional price just for two more figures. Don't know yet, but retail version of this thing is very awesome. Awesome box work. I like the 50th anniversary motif that they have going on. And the artwork on the front is just outstanding. So, uh... This comes with two figures. It comes with the uh, Chuckles and it comes with the, uh, what is that, the guy, the Elite Horseman. So it's nice to see another Chuckles figure released finally that we can actually get at retail. It was a little hard to come by some of the other releases, so anxious to see what this one looks like. This is the um, Desert, Desert Duel set. So... If you haven't found it yet, it should be showing up in retail anytime now. Uh, if you haven't got a toy store around you, like I do not, you may want to check with Entertainment Earth, which is who provided me with this lovely example for y'all today. Um, so yeah, go check out Entertainment Earth, see if they still have it in stock, and get this thing, because it's pretty awesome looking. So, what we're going to do next is just uh, unbox this thing and take a look at the individual vehicles and the individual figures and do a quick review of them. So it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned. So here is the boxed version of the G.I. Joe 50th Anniversary Desert Duel set. This is the retail exclusive set, or I guess it's retail not exclusive. Um, it was released at SDCC as a uh, exclusive version with different packaging and with two additional figures, but today we're just looking at the retail version. The box art on this thing is pretty amazing. It's pretty awesome. And as you can see, it's a uh, big box, so... Um, Bear with me while we work with the the camera and everything here and the light stands. They're starting to creep into the set a little bit because it's a big set. But flip this thing over on the side. On the back. Here's the uh, contents. The Foe Striker. The Cobra Basilisk. The Horseman figure and Chuckles figure. And the kind of place that stuff that goes along with it. So, very cool. Again, I love this. Uh, the actual box itself is just amazing. Uh, the artwork is wonderful. The colors just pop really well on this thing. So, it's, it's great. The uh, top is just the plain G.I. Joe stuff. The bottom nothing much there the uh, side just has the G.I. Joe logo and the other side is also just the G.I. Joe logo so let's go ahead and tear into this thing and get it opened up so flip it up on the back here there is a piece of tape on each side we'll go ahead and just slice that tape open same thing for the other side and we'll fold out the ends of the box. Pop the cardboard tabs open. And flip it over. 
And let's see how we're going to do this. I'm going to go this way with it so it will fit on the screen. Just uh, reach in here, grab the box, and try to pull on it. And it's starting to come. There it goes. Again, it's a big box. There we go. So, empty box, flattens pretty easily. We'll take this to the side. Not sure if I'm going to recycle that yet or not, or I may hold on to it because of that wonderful box art. Don't know yet. Here is the box packaging. So, we've got the figures in their little home on this side. Vehicle stuff over here. So, to begin with, we're just going to go ahead and cut the tape that's holding the figure box in place. And just remove that whole inner sleeve thing from it, if we can. It just slides out. Very nice. We'll set that to the side and come back and visit that here in a little while when we look at the figures. Then a lot of empty space here in the cardboard. Fold down under the light. And we have parts for the basilisk. Looks like parts bag for the accessories on the faux striker. Uh, more accessories for the basilisk. The main body for the faux striker. Tires, probably for the uh, faux striker. Tank treads for the basilisk. The main hull, the canopy for the basilisk, and the uh, top part of the basilisk. And then underneath here, we've got file cards and instructions and sticker sheets oh my very cool looking so that's a uh, that's what's in this packaging so that's pretty cool uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just take these out of the cardboard box so we can get rid of the cardboard somehow See what all we have still. That's a lot of stuff. That's cool. So yeah, this is a pretty big set. Has a lot of pieces inside of it. Uh, and that's pretty awesome. So what we'll do next is we will take each of these figures, uh, sorry, each of the vehicles individually. We're going to go ahead and construct them following the instructions. Uh, we'll leave them in the bags for right now until we get to the whatever part of the instructions that says to do whatever. We'll uh, pull the bags apart individually, I guess, next and uh, pile it all together. So stick around while we get into that. This is the uh, documentation package that came with it. The instructions, the file cards, the stickers. So I figure we'll just uh, go ahead and take a look at this stuff while we're at this point. We gotta open it sometime, right? So we have file cards 
like all the other 50th anniversary, there are two cards per character, and each card has two different languages on it. So, we've got the English version here that we're after. And Undercover Agent Chuckles in English as well. So, the file cards are a nice touch. I like them. It's got some nice artwork on it. Stick those to the side here. We have the Cobra sticker sheet. And I will get a scan of this and include it so you can see a higher resolution of it. Uh, it's got some really nice decals here. The uh, Basilisk emblem on it looks really cool. And it's uh, kind of an orange color with some different versions of all the normal stuff we're used to seeing. So that's cool. The other sticker sheet is for the Faux Striker. You know, get a scan of this so you can see it a little bit closer. And then we have the instruction sheet. You've got, and I know this is kind of hard to see, but uh, one side has the basilisk. And the other side is the uh, Faux Striker. I'll try to get a scan of each of these as we're going through the um, construction phase. So you can see what's going on here. Because I know it's uh, probably a little blurry right there. Maybe even washed out because of the lights we got in here. But uh, yeah, this is a nice sheet. I do wish they had uh, included two separate ones. Just because I like to keep them uh, separate. But, oh well, it's still nice. So it has the combined instructions and sticker placement all in one. So, that is the accessory kit. Or the uh, documentation kit, I guess I should say. Instructions, stickers, file cards. So I think we're just going to go ahead and unbag all these parts first uh, and do them all individually so we can see what the parts are. And then we'll get into the actual construction mode. So we're going to start with the, this bright blue piece, which is the top canopy for the um, basilisk. And as you can see, it is just uh, taped up on the side here. So we're just going to slice the tape open. And <clears throat> pull out the part. So here is the uh, the top canopy piece for the basilisk. Uh, yes, it is a snow cat. Yes, it is blue, and it has red things on it. But it's a very nice looking blue, and it looks very cool. So uh, it's got a shiny metallic color that I don't know if it picks up really well in this light or not, but. Uh, it's very cool looking. It's odd, but cool. So, there is that piece. <clears throat> it does have the um, the plastic pieces already put in place for the lens cover. So the headlight lens covers and the uh, spotlight lens cover. And it's got the uh, steering wheel already put in place for us. It also has the uh, side mud flap things already put on for us and the uh, grill covers for the uh, intake stuff so we flip it over we can kind of see how that goes on here it just snaps in place and it's just a snap-on piece as well so there's that piece here we have the main body hole for the basilisk and like before it's just taped here on the bag so We'll just slice the tape open on the bag. And there we go. So here's a, where you can see all the detail work on this. Uh, it looks pretty amazing. This is molded in kind of a, uh, a slight metallic gray. And it's got some uh, of that pearlization happening in it. I don't know if that picks up well in the light or not, but... Uh, it's kind of a dark gray, but it has that pearl, 
marbling effect going on. The seats, very nicely detailed. The console there in the center. The engine in the back. If we flip it over, we've got the two wheels here that spin. They're already attached. They are a hard plastic, not rubber or anything like that. But yeah, that's uh, the main body hole. Next up we have the tank treads for the uh, basilisk. One and two. Uh, these are pretty cool looking. Again, it's the traditional mold for the snowcat. The hubcaps here are painted with this, uh, it's almost a light purplish gray metallic color. And it shines pretty goodly. So, uh, that's pretty cool. Other than that, nothing uh, special about these. The tank treads do not move, in case you were wondering. But yeah, that's the tank treads. Here is one of these small accessory packs for the Basilisk. Has, it looks like, the uh, ski missiles, the front wheels, the engine cover, and some other stuff in here. So we have the uh, front tires, <clears throat> they also have that nice kind of gray metallic sheen to them. Uh, these do not look to be painted, these look to be actually molded in that color. <clears throat> and if we flip it over and look at the back side you can see the <clears throat> spokes for how it connects to it. So they are hubcaps, that's a nice effect. The tires are hard plastic, not rubber. I don't know that we're going to get to see many rubber tires anymore, but <clears throat> uh, we've got the blue engine cover. Nice molding work done on it. We've got the windshield wiper. Solid black. <clears throat> and we've got the uh, two ski missiles. And the ski treads. Uh, the ski treads themselves are molded in a real bright, shiny silver color. Uh, a lot brighter than the inside of the canopy was. And they do have the two peg holes on them for figures to stand. We'll see if the figures can fit on them later in our review. Here's the last accessory, well, almost last, um, the other small accessory kit. For the Basilisk, has the missile launcher, the missiles, the uh, missile launcher uh, attachment, and the back, whatever you want to call that thing. So here's what comes in that accessory kit. We've got the missile launcher, which is again in this uh, kind of marbly silver color. Very bright, a lot of detail work. Uh, it's the same missile launcher we've seen on all the other uh, Snowcats, Havoc Mark II, whatever you want to call it, it's the same piece. It's got the uh, press the button to go across it feature to fire the missiles. We've got the molded uh, attachment piece for the missile launcher that fits into the back. Same silver marbly color. The marbling is not as pronounced in this piece as some of the other ones, but nice silver. You've got four of these bright red missiles. And then we've got this back panel piece that fits onto the back of the basilisk in that same metallic blue color. Cool. 
And this is the actual last piece for the basilisk. <laughs> it's a funny name to say. Uh, it is the uh, actual glass canopy. It's plastic, not glass, just in case you were wondering. It's got a, it's the same mold as what we've seen before, so nothing special about it. Uh, it's molded in this nice kind of slightly translucent, bright red color. I don't know if you can really see too good through that or not with the light in here, but uh, you can see through the canopy a little bit. Uh, it's not as opaque as I thought it was going to be, but uh, I think it'll work pretty well. So. We're going to go ahead and start uh, by putting together the Basilisk first. Simply because it's the bigger vehicle. So, <laughs> um, so the instructions don't actually have uh, written directions. It's just the pictures. So I will throw up the pictures here on the screen here. And uh, so you can see what it says to do. But uh, we'll kind of just wing it from the rest of that. Uh, to start with, we have the main hull here. And then it says to attach the uh, front wheels to the spokes. So I'm going to do that first. So there are just uh, the two pegs and the front uh, next to the seats. And the uh, wheels themselves just have uh, the hole for the pegs. So you just kind of put them on there and uh, press them in until they snap in place. Just like that. One for each side. snap then it says to attach the uh, tank treads to the back so we've got two tank treads and the way these things fit on here uh, on the rear here there is um, so you've got an open part at the bottom and then at the top there is this uh, square peg thing the square peggy thing fits into these notches on the back next to the turret so you can see right there and uh, so the the square peggy thing will go to the top and you just fit over top of that slot opening I don't know how well y'all can see this but uh, maybe that'll work so you just take that square peg and there are notches on there you just fit it in place and just press down until it snaps in place just like that do that for each side just press down on it until it snaps in place Does it snap? Then uh, maybe it's not supposed to. Just kind of wiggle it till it latches at the bottom. The uh, tires on the hull will stick out a little bit. Uh, as long as it looks like it's flush on the back side here, then you're good to go. So. Step two is to take the canopy top, the blue piece, and just snap it in place over top of the main hole. And it just fits down straight. I'm looking here to see. So the only real thing I see is there is this uh, one snap piece at the front next to the steering wheel that will uh, catch here in the front on that thing. Uh, and other than that, I don't think there's any other snaps or catches or anything like that. So pretty much just line it up and wherever it fits. Um, make sure that on the rear, the hole here in the back lines up with the hole here for the uh, missile launcher. 
and then just kind of press down on it and that one piece in the front will snap when you have it right you may have to press in on it a little bit with your thumb to get it to go on but uh, just snaps in place and that's pretty much it seems a little loose but uh, it is in place so that's uh, all they say to do so that must be it Step three is to attach the missile launcher. So we have the missile launcher attachment and the missile launcher itself. The missile launcher uh, arm will just fit into this hole here in the center of the rear. And it's uh, there's these basically these pegs and notchy things. And it's a, kind of a soft plastic, so it should fit pretty easily. Just uh, put it in place and press down on it until it snaps into place. You may want to uh, rotate it a little bit to get it to go until you're confident it's actually in there correctly. And as um, I'm doing this, when I'm turning this, I can feel that there are actual grooves in this thing so it's not like a smooth turn. So if you're filling those grooves, that means you have it in place correctly. And that also serves to uh, hold the back end in place. Now, as far as which way is forward and which way is reverse on this thing, I have no absolutely no idea. What I'm going to do is just assume that uh, this little curved piece right here see if I can get it turned so you can see that uh, so instead so you see this round uh, round piece right here is only on one side we're gonna have that on the side of the driver and then we're gonna say forward is this way so have that little turn wheel thing on the driver side and we'll call that forward then you've got the missile launcher itself which has these two peg holder things on it and it just snaps in place on top of these spokes so just put it in place and uh, just snap down on it you may have to press down to get it to go in place and uh, this one didn't work so I think I have it backwards so let's uh pop that thing off and swivel it around and let's find out so there is this little notch here on the side it's only on one side not both sides and I think it only fits on one way so let's just see if that actually works or not I don't think it matters because it doesn't go on that way either that's just weird well, there it goes okay so yeah uh, that's actually a catch to keep it from uh, rotating all the way up or all the way down and it will fit on only one way so that little flywheel that we're talking about actually needs to go on the passenger side. So we're just going to swivel it around. And now this thing rotates up and down, but it stops right there. And that little piece that we showed you that was sticking out is actually a catch to keep it from... I guess that's a, a safety mechanism to keep somebody from uh, shooting their own vehicle. Step four is to attach the canopy. So we've got the nice red canopy here. It has this uh, kind of long spoky thing on the back of it, which will fit in here on the front. 
it just snaps in place underneath this uh, thing. You just kind of press on it and it just snaps in place. So not that difficult, but then that allows it to uh, rotate up, rotate down and just locks in place. It's a little weird that it, uh, canopy doesn't come all the way forward on this one. You'll notice there's a little bit of a gap here at the front where it uh, doesn't come all the way down. I don't know if that's just mine or if that's all of them. But it does snap in place and it does hold tight for the most part. So, yeah, that's just a little weird. But that's the canopy installation. Step five is to attach the windshield wiper blade, this little thing here, and it just attaches to uh, the canopy itself where there's this little opening and this little tabby thing. Um, so when you're looking at the wiper blade, you'll notice that there is this one arm that's longer than the other arm. The long arm goes on the top and the short end goes on the bottom. And then this little uh, hole thing in the back lines up with this uh, thing here. So you just kind of stick it in place and it snaps and should hold tight. Then it just uh, moves like that. Um, on the Mark II, uh, the Havoc Mark II, which was the uh, green snowcat, um, the windshield wiper blade did not work very well it had a tendency to uh, skip at the bottom and go way down here uh, but this one works really nicely it's uh holds in place very good shouldn't mention at the top when it's all the way extended it does stick up a little bit if you can see that as compared to once you actually start down here it's uh, much more flush but not that big of a deal but uh, just something to point out but it, uh, it does work a lot nicer than the, the Mark II of the Havoc. So I'm glad to see that they fixed that issue at least. So. Step six is to attach the uh, rear, whatever you call this thing. <laughs> And the way you do this is uh, it wants you to put, so the there is a little catchy groove thing here on the bottom. And these little catchy groove things at the top. And if you're looking at it from the, uh, the detail view of it, there is a tow hook at the bottom and stands for the figures to attach to. So that's what goes to the bottom. The uh, handrail is what goes to the top. So take that and it wants you to swing it on to the top first. And then swing it down and snap it in place at the bottom. So, pretty simple. And it does, uh, you can pop it off pretty easily if you need to. But uh, start with it slightly elevated. Swing it down until it locks in place. Step seven is the engine cover, which is this uh, blue piece here. It looks like a wing or something like that. And it will go over top of the engine compartment here underneath this thing. So you'll probably want to rotate this up so you can get into this pretty easily. Then it will only fit one way, so turn it so that it's uh, facing the same way as the cutout there. Essentially it's a triangle looking thing. And it just, uh, you just put it in place down here, and there. It's a little tight. But just kind of wiggle it around and, uh, until it lines up correctly, and it just uh, snaps in place. I don't know if they're supposed to be. A groove there that isn't there or not supposed to be a groove that is there but this one is not fitting 
easily. Not as easily as I remember the rest of them fitting. Which is a shame. Well, it snapped in place, but uh, doesn't look like it fit. So, yeah, that piece uh, is weird. I still don't have it in right. But I guess as long as it's in there, that's all you really got to worry about. So just uh, kind of put it in there and uh, snap it in until it locks in place. Oh well. It's not going anywhere. Nobody will see it. It's fine. It is kind of aggravating that they didn't think to actually line those grooves up anywhere. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Step eight is to uh, construct the ski missile things. So we'll put that to the side for a second and take a look at the ski missiles. So we've got two of these. Uh, the missiles themselves are the red pieces. And if you look on them, and hopefully you can see this, there is a round, almost pinhole right there on one side. And then on the uh, actual ski itself, on the rear, so if you go to the fat end, they have this little piece here, uh, which looks like little pinchy claw things. That pinchy claw thing essentially grabs a hold of that uh, pinhole, is the best way I can say of doing this. So line up the, uh, the pinhole as best you can, push down and it should just snap in place. And that's really all that holds this on. But as you can see, it does a good job of it. So that's all you got to do for that. There are two of them. So the same way for the other side. Find the pinhole near the bottom there. You can see that white through there. Then find the little pinchy claws at the rear of the ski. And just press it down until it snaps. And then you can... Uh, do that with it and it should bounce a little bit but uh, it's not going anywhere at that point so now you have your two ski missiles created step nine is to attach the ski missiles to the actual basilisk itself so there they have these traditional uh, dumbbell shaped pin things <laughs> and on the uh, basilisk itself on the side you've got one on each side so you just take the skis and just press down on that dumbbell shaped thing <laughs> and just kind of move it back and forth until it locks into place and uh, that's all there is to mounting that thing it should just look like that when you're finished do one for each side. We'll do it from the, this view if we can. So find your dumbbell shaped slot hole and just press down on it to get it to rock it back and forth a little bit to get it to go on there. They don't attach very deeply so they're basically just surface mounted uh, but it sits on there, it holds it in place you can jostle it around, turn it upside down, it's not going anywhere so it's nice. It works. Step 10 which is not included on the blueprints anywhere is to attach the missiles to the missile launcher. Uh, they kind of point this out after they show you how to put the uh, driver in there. Um, it is also funny that and worth noting that they have a picture of Snow Job as the driver. At least it looks like Snow Job. Uh, but anyways, so the missiles, you've got four of them. 
They just fit into these holes on the missile launcher. They are spring loaded, so just press down until it clicks. Click. Click. And click. And you have your missiles loaded. Uh, the launcher feature, as we pointed out earlier, there's just this lever on the back. You just uh, move it across and they fire. And it actually works really well, so that's cool. Probably point that out again uh, when we get to the review stage, but the missiles do fire. And it's easy to reload. And there you have it. We have a fully assembled Cobra Basilisk. So this is the faux striker in the uh, bag here, the main body, and looks like the roll cage is on here. Let's just go ahead and open this thing up. So as you can see, you have the uh, the back part of this uh, roll cage thing, the top part of the roll cage. Everything else is already put together for us. The engine cover, which uh, is removable. It's not really easily removable. How do we do this? Yeah, we'll not worry about it. Uh, got the camera spotting scope thing that moves up and down. Steering wheel that uh, moves left and right. Nice detail work on the seats. The front of it. So it's a uh, traditional, what we've come to expect out of the uh, AWE Striker. In this nice kind of gray sorry tan color scheme here so that's one of the parts this is the tire accessory pack for the uh, faux striker so there are four tires here the uh, inside is this uh, nice kind of molded, uh, almost bronze color. And other than that, just regular tires. These are hard plastic, not rubberized. And here we have the major accessory pack for the Faux Striker. Looks like it has all sorts of goodies in here. So let's go ahead and open it up while we're here. All kinds of goodies in this. Uh, it's got a uh, canopy pack, some kind of uh, canopy structure here, two of these pieces, uh, the hose that probably attaches to the camera, 
two red gas cans, a tripod thing here, this big old Gatling gun. The uh, gun does move, so that's cool. Uh, some kind of articulated arm, probably for that Gatling gun. A smaller big gun. A uh, handkerchief for neck piece for one of the figures. Two antennas. This big old bullet chain. And another bumper piece. So that's uh, all the accessories that come with this thing. So that's uh, quite a few to look at. So step one is to install the tires. <clears throat> so we have uh, four tires, obviously. You'll want the um, part that looks like the hubcap facing outward. Uh, the other side is the kind of plain part. So the one with the little uh, rivets and things, that's what's facing out. And all it is is... Uh, You've got these little spokes on the side for each of the four tires and you just fit them over top of there and just uh, press down on them until they snap in place. Fairly simple. Do that for all four tires. Uh, on the front, just make note that uh, the steering is actually still in place so when you press down on that it will move so don't press down too hard on it. It might snap something. So you may want to uh, grab a hold of the steering column with one finger and then press it in place with the other one. <clears throat> and then just repeat that for the other side. Line up the pegs with the peg hole and snap it in place. Now you got your tires on there. And it should roll for you. Step two is to attach the roll cage. So the roll cage came in that package with it. Uh, and there are two posts on the back that line up with the uh, these post holes on the rear. The two center ones line up with these two posts. And then the front has these little uh, snappy attachy thingies. Uh, and they will actually just snap up under the hood, more or less. Actually, no, they snap in here to the side, sorry. So you'll see right there, there's uh, two little tab holes, one on each side, so that's where these front pieces will line up with. So just kind of position it over in approximately the right position, lining up your pegs with the peg holes, and then just uh, press down on them till they snap in place. The two in the back have um, catches on them, so you'll should hear it snap when it goes in like that and then the ones in the front or the uh, middle don't really have such a thing on them but uh, just kind of press down on them and they kind of go in place and then for the front you just line up that little tabby thing with the uh, tab connector and just press it in place same thing for the passenger side. Just kind of shimmy it into place and press in on it. And uh, there is your roll bar. Roll cage. Step three is to attach the windshield shield I guess is the best thing to call it so it's this big piece right here 
and it uh, fits all over top of the uh, driver's side window so that uh, bullets won't come in and hit them I guess uh, so to do that <clears throat> you just um, kind of line it up so that the uh, the shield itself is roughly in front of the uh, driver's side then you've got these uh, two um, grooves hopefully you can see that in the front they actually will snap onto the roll bar cage so just kind of line it up and then just press back on it until it snaps in place you may have to grab one side and snap it in and then flip it over to the other side and snap it in and it just uh, sits flush on top and that's pretty much all there is to it so I will point out while we're here that uh, these two attachments on it do pivot so that's where I'm assuming the uh, the guns will attach at some point but it's kinda cool that they do uh, swing in and out like that so So step four is to attach the gas cans. So we've got the uh, two red gas cans that came in the accessory kit. And they will attach to the front of the uh, doom buggy on the blast shield attachment. And if you'll notice, there are these two little tabs here at the front, just below the windshield itself. And then at the bottom here, there are two like grooved corners. So just take your gas can and fit one corner into the actual corner itself and then just uh, push on it until it slides in place. The little tabby thing will snap in place on top of the handle. So just uh, line up the corner and then just uh, press on it to get it to fall in place and press down to get it to shimmy and snap in underneath that little thing right there just like that and they actually remove themselves pretty easily so if you want to take it back out just be careful because the uh, blast shield will come off if you're not careful but they pop off pretty easily and just uh, can do it again just like that. Find your corner. I know it's hard to see that way, but find your corner and just kind of press it in place and press down until it snaps on there. And you're good to go. Two gas cans. Step five is to attach the antennas. So we've got uh, two of these antennas that came in the accessory pack. They are pretty much the same, so they'll go on either side. On the vehicle itself, you have in the center, so find your big hole on top of the roll bar. And then there is a uh, hole on either side for the antennas. So you just take them and there's just a little peg type thing there and just uh, put them in the peg hole press down until they snap in place turn this one up on the side so you can hopefully see it a little bit better but just uh, take the peg put it in the hole and I apologize if my hands in the way but you just press down on it and it snaps in place. And now you've got two antennas. Step six is the rear bumper guard. And that is this piece right here. It also came in the accessory kit, so it goes to the rear of the vehicle. 
and just like the front um, blast shield it just attaches to your roll bar cage so pretty much just line it up so that it uh, lines up and then just uh, press in on it and it will just snap in place it's uh, not really got a whole lot to hold it on there other than those two pieces so press on it until it snaps in place and that's pretty much it <clears throat> so I'm kind of worried about that that may come off fairly easily at that point but uh, it seems to be fairly secure okay and I guess that's it then Step seven is to attach the big Gatling gun to the articulated arm. So we have the Gatling gun and the articulated arm here. Uh, on the bottom of the gun, you have this uh, peg. It's a round circular peg. And then on the uh, mount itself, there is also just an impression here for the peg to go in. So not really a hole, but uh, part of a hole. And you just... Uh, put it in like that it just doesn't go all the way down it doesn't snap in place it is meant to be removable so they made it so that it attaches and deattaches fairly easily but it still holds it in there secure um, nice so and again this is an articulated arm so it swivels and pivots and turns and all that good stuff so that's a kind of a cool attachment there so uh, as far as how you need it mounted, uh, turn it so that it's uh, in this weird A shape or upside down V shape if that's how you prefer to look at it. But again, it does swivel and pivot and go whichever way you need it to. So you can turn it the right way later if you need to, but that's what you're shooting for. Step eight is to attach the big Gatling gun to the top of the faux striker. So we just uh, put together our Gatling gun and there's this big hole in the top of the roll bar cage. So you just take the Gatling gun and line the hole up with the peg and just press down on it and you have it mounted. Then it will still rotate. Whoops, <laughs> I broke it. It just snaps off actually, so no big deal. Uh, but yeah, it will still rotate a little bit here. It's a little tight, but it is meant to rotate. And uh, that's what it will look like at that point. So you can still rotate it like that if you want to, and you can shoot it from behind up and down you can even shoot yourself there if uh, that's what you're after but it's got a nice pivoting action on it so pretty cool step nine is to attach the uh, canopy arms to the vehicle so you have these two canopy arms that came in the accessory pack uh, they are pretty much the uh, mirror images of one another so if you'll see there is this uh, tiny little uh, peg tab thing uh, so it will need to line up the correct way to get it to snap in place and uh, the They attach here in the front. So where they had that uh, articulated army thing right there uh, There is and I don't know if you can see this real well I can Move that out of the way this little bitty tab hole thing so essentially this uh, 
little tabby thing will fit right into it. But again, you'll want to have it turned the right way. So this one is for the other side. Um, but it just uh, snaps in place there. Well, somehow. I guess I actually did have the right one. It is put at an angle. So, and it actually, the uh, rear of it will snap into place back here uh, on the rear bumper that we attached earlier. So feed one end of it through here first and just kind of move it around till this uh, tabby thing lines up at the front and then press down once you get it lined up and it should snap into place there. I know this is probably very hard to see but it just uh, lines up there and you just press down on it to get it to catch and it's not a very deep tab or anything like that then on the rear you just press down on it and it should just snap in place and uh, that is the carry mode for your uh, canopy. So we'll do this, see if we can do this to the same to the other side. Uh, find your little tabby thing. Put the other end to the back. Find that little tab hole thing. Put it as close to in place as you can. Press down a little bit to get it to go in. And then just press down on the rear. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's not the best design in the world, but uh, it's an interesting one nonetheless. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much all that is. So I don't know if I can get a closer shot of that or not, but uh, we will try that here in just a second. Step 10 is just to attach the uh, little hose that we have to the camera. Uh, it's not a camera, it's a, I don't know what you call it. It's a, basically it's a uh, hydraulic steering mechanism for the, uh, the gun up here. But anyway, so you attach it to this little peg here and the side of the camera looking thing. And then the other end attaches up here to this little peg tab thing and uh, the hose is pretty small but uh, you just kind of press it in place like that and then you just route it I want to route this one through here and then attach it there at the top and that's always been one of the main gripes I've had about the whole all striker is this thing is just really weird. I really wish they had to put that hose on the other side because then maybe it wouldn't look so weird and act all funny inside the the cockpit there. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much all it is. Just attach up here at the top and on the driver side of this thing. So. Now your uh, faux striker is completely assembled. So, cool. So next up is the Ford Observer Camouflage Canopy and how to assemble it. Uh, it has this as separate instructions here, so we'll just uh, kind of go from the ground up and see what we can come up with. So, uh, the first step, it wants you to take the rear piece off. Uh, but before that, let's go ahead and pop off these little canopy feet things. And they just, two of those, just pop them off. And then the uh, rear bumper just kind of snaps apart like that. It, pretty simple. And we're just going to slide the uh, faux striker to the side for a moment. You take each of these little legs and uh, you'll notice they are pointed out at one end 
and they fit in these little round holes in the back of this uh, bumper thing. There's a little uh, peg on the bottom of the uh, angled end and just fits right in place on that little circular thing. And if you'll notice, there is a... I don't know if you can see that real well or not. Let's see if I can... There is a slight depression on one end and on the end of the canopy stick uh, it's rounded except on one side so we'll line up that uh, flat side with the flat end on your uh, bumper and just uh, snap in place like that sorry if we got out of focus there but that's what you're doing here so do the same thing for the other side find the little flat side and line it up with the flat side on your hole and it does kind of point away from things then you take the uh, big gun off the top just pull it out of its mounting bracket. You may need to twist it a little bit to get it to come out, but it uh, snaps out pretty easily. And it fits in the uh, same size hole on the back here. So you just press down on it to get it to snap in place. And then for the canopy, it comes in this nice rolled thing. And there is this uh, little piece of uh, elastic band on here. So just uh, pull that elastic band like that to get it to unroll. Then it just kind of folds out like that and on each side. zoom out a little bit so we can see this a little clearer then you take uh, you'll notice it's in this nice kind of tripod uh, trapezoid kind of shape and at the top you've had these two attachment points just take those and snap them into place and you'll notice there's a little hole right here the hole lines up with the antenna. You just slide the antenna into that hole and then slide this thing down and then just snap it in place. More or less. Wherever these little things line up. And they do move around a little bit so There you go snap and then wherever you can get the other one to snap on at I would have thought you may have to wiggle it a little bit to get it to go in place but there we go snapping in place and just kind of pull it tight so it's taut then on the other end and fold it back out you've got these uh, big old carabiner clips I guess is the best thing I could tell you that they are and then you take this big old Gatling gun thing that we just looked at and just fit these things over top and just rotate it to it kind of snaps in place I don't know if there's a special way you're supposed to do that or not it doesn't really look like it and they don't really want to stay in place too much here. But they just fit over top of that thing like this. Real loosely. And the same thing for the other side. 
and uh, voila, you have this weird canopy thing for them to sit up under and you know, at night or whatever it is. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, Forward Observer Canopy, Camouflage Canopy, sorry. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of weird at the same time. It makes a little bit more sense with the uh, exclusive pack that has the four figures instead of two because you've got two Joes that could, uh, if you're talking in realistic terms, pop the uh, bumper off. But, you know, it doesn't have to be 100% realistic, does it? I mean, after all, we do have the uh, Red Gator with... Uh, Croc Master this, in this set, so yeah, that's what we got to store. Just kind of unfold this thing and just roll it back up, I suppose, is the best thing. Um, not really a good way to store it on the vehicle uh, because of this weird antenna, so you pretty much have to take it off before you can roll it up real good but these things just snap on there and snap off pretty easily but uh, then you just pretty much just roll it back up into whatever size you can get it to go on and just uh, take your little stretchy elastic band thing that comes attached to it and uh, fit it over the top of the end of it Somehow, you may have to roll it up pretty tight to get it to work, actually. Because it's a real flexible cloth-like material. But once you get it tight enough, just uh, snap that back over top of it and uh, it's ready to go then you can store it back on the vehicle <laughs> and try to do it without tearing the whole thing apart is what it amounts to which I'm not having the greatest success at but uh, it will store just like that and if you pop the front piece off like I did just uh, snap it back in place and uh, snap this uh, rear piece back on just like that and you can leave the, the big gun on there and pull these things off and put them back in their little holy tank thing. And then you're ready to roll again. So overall it's uh, not a bad little contraption. They did think it through quite a bit. And for the most part it seems to work. But these things are pretty flexible too, so I'm afraid they probably will break pretty easily. But it's nice that you do have options, so uh, that's kind of cool. I'll try to get a photo of it uh, on its side and include here so you can see what it looks like from the uh, driver's perspective and things like that. So. so one of the things that it does not mention anywhere in the instructions is what to do with this other big gun um, but luckily they've thought it through they just didn't include it on the instructions so these uh, little articulated arms that are on the front of the uh, roll bar the actual big gun actually just fits right in there it just snaps in place
so that you have a uh, side mounted cannon that uh, and it will fit on either side the left or the right so that's kind of cool um, but yeah they didn't mention that anywhere in the instructions so a little bonus for you uh, should I guess it's worth pointing out that the gun itself there is this big uh, ammo clip here that comes with it uh, the ammo belt is meant to pretty much only go on one side and you just kind of press it in place here and uh, it just snaps in there like that so while you can mount this thing to either side uh, if you mount it on the driver's side just be aware that the the big belt you'll have to kind of deal with it stick it in under the cage or whatever but uh, if you put it on in on the other side you can have it kind of just drape over the front of the vehicle if you want which is kind of what I prefer here because uh, if you've got a secondary figure riding shotgun that gives him another weapon to shoot with so kind of stick that thing right there and uh, you're good to go at that point so there's also the uh, the tripod that came with that <coughs> so <coughs> you can always take it off of the vehicle and I just <coughs> popped that thing off and the uh, articulated arm came off but it does just snap back on place in case you do that uh, but then the tripod itself works like any other tripod you just uh, press down and you have a tripod mounted gun so yeah it works pretty well and you could always just store it here in the front if you wanted to works pretty well that way or I guess you could stick it in the back here as well if you wanted to and kind of store it whichever way you want to so it does work So now let's look at the figures that came with this. This is pretty much just the same way that we pulled it out of the uh, box itself. So the figures are just sitting loose in this blue background packaging thing. So you can uh, toss that away if you want or whatever you want to do with that, it's fine. And these are the figures. Uh, up at the top you have their figure stands. They have the traditional 50th anniversary gold plated uh, faction symbols on it the G.I. Joe and the Cobra and then the code names Elite Horseman and Philip Chuckles Provost so that's cool uh, we'll go ahead and start I guess with the Elite Horseman there's a backpack that comes with it. We'll take a look at it momentarily. The small assault rifle. And four of these landmines. If I can get them to come out. Or the landmines. Now the uh, rest of the packaging is for chuckles. We're going to assume that the uh, the big gun here 
is for him since he's got the uh, tripod at his feet. That's really the only reason, but I guess you could put it with the Elite Horseman as well if you wanted to. That gun, a tripod, the Chuckles figure, an assault rifle, a pistol with a silencer, and a knife and more recycling material so let's kind of spread this out so you can see everything and this is what the contents are not a ton of accessories, but uh, considering it is a vehicle playset, it comes with more than plenty, so that's cool. We'll go ahead and zoom in on these individually and take a look at them and a closer look. Up first is the Chuckles figure. Uh, this is pretty much the same sculpt that we've seen from other figures, so nothing special. Um, I will note that the uh, knee... <laughs> You saw that. Uh, this knee pad is extremely loose on mine, but it does just snap right on, right back on. So uh, if it does pop off on you, just pop it back on there. Uh, articulation is pretty much the same as we have come to expect with all the other figures. So he's got the uh, traditional ball joint swivel at the shoulder the elbow joint that swivels as well and the traditional swivel wrist joint uh, the head articulation 360 and it doesn't move a lot up and down but there is some movement there and i think this is a new head sculpt for chuckles here and if you'll notice he's got uh, the web gear that we've seen in other figures it does have a molded in pistol on the side that is not removable then on his uh, side here he's got a holster for a pistol which hopefully will fit his pistol with the silencer on it we will test that theory real quick for you it uh, fits but doesn't go all the way in if you can see that uh, and I don't know. Yes, so the pistol has a removable silencer. So if you take the silencer off, then the pistol fits a little bit better into the holster. Uh, it fits in there pretty snugly, so it won't be falling out. Then you can take the uh, silencer itself and we'll slip in here where they have this little molded uh, circular piece if I can get it to go in there uh, I think this was uh, pretty much the same configuration as on the uh, whoops <laughs> this thing small 50th anniversary uh, shipwreck release in the hunt for Cobra commander so if you line it up there we go the silencer fits in that little hole right there and uh, that actually makes me think that that uh, we originally thought that was a uh, a flashlight for shipwreck, and since we know that that's actually a silencer, I'm actually curious to go back and take a look and see if uh, that silencer fits that pistol he has as well for the shipwreck figure. Chances are that's exactly what it is, and I'm just a goofy person and didn't realize that to begin with. So there's also a uh, sheath on his bottom boot for his knife and it slides in there pretty easily and does lock into place pretty well uh, you'll notice the pistol fell out but the knife did not so that's cool so sticking the pistol back in there then the other side he's just got a big ammo pouch 
and everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, the skin tone on this thing looks a little off to me. It's kind of a really orange color. Um, that makes sense in terms of he's in the desert and maybe he's just got a bad sunburn or a uh, suntan, I guess. Um, but it is a little off-putting that it's a, a, just a real weird, almost orange color. Uh, kind of an olive color, but uh, yeah. So, no big deal. Uh, looking at his weapons that comes with him, he does have this big machine gun with the tripod mount. So all you got to do is just uh, press that in place right there and you're good to go with the tripod. It does articulate pretty well on there. So nice big gun for him. And then the uh, kind of traditional assault rifle that we've seen in other figures. One of the other accessories that comes with this set that uh, is not mentioned in the documentation anywhere is actually one of the accessories out of the vehicle pack, which is this cool little uh, neckerchief thingy majig here for Mr. Chuckles here. <clears throat> so, obviously you can't fit it over his head or anything like that. So in order to actually attach it, you gotta pop the figure's head off. So just uh, grab it and pull. Then you can put the handkerchief, neckerchief thing over top of the stem and then attach the head back on here. And it fits in pretty snugly, but it does look pretty cool once you get it in place. Uh, that's to keep all the sand and everything from uh, getting in his mouth and nostrils and stuff like that. So it's a very cool little accessory for the desert duel. Um, once you put that on there, it does restrict movement pretty well. I mean, his head will turn slightly to the side, but not very much at all. So, it's a cool little feature that's not really mentioned anywhere in the document, but uh, it's nice that they included that. It would have liked to have seen like a pair of goggles or something come with him to go over his eyes also, so when he's driving around in the desert, the sand wouldn't get in his eyes. But at least they thought about the uh, mouth and getting sand in his mouth anyway, so it's pretty cool. Next up we have the Elite Horseman, which is a pretty cool figure here. Uh, it is a nice kind of metallic-y blue color with a lot of this gray-silver highlights going on. So it's uh, pretty close to the same color as the Basilisk vehicle itself is painted in. And the figure does look pretty good. Uh, detail work is uh, pretty good. It's uh, I think we've seen this uh, color scheme, or not the color scheme, the uh, figure itself in some other iterations. So it's a pretty nice figure. The uh, helmet is pretty cool, but it uh, does not have a removable mask or anything like that. Um, the articulation is pretty much the same as all the rest of the figures, so nothing really to point out there. It's got some nice detail work on the um, web gear, the vest, and it's got this nice painted, and it's got some like white on top of the silver to mimic some kind of camouflage effect, I guess, but uh, it works pretty well. It does look pretty good. And it's a nice detail in on the figure, so yeah, pretty much pretty cool. Uh, the accessories he comes with, he's got this backpack, which in and of itself is uh, pretty neat. It is one that uh, does open up, and it has places to store stuff in there. He's just got these two little pegs that clasp back down and hold the pack in place. And it attaches pretty well to his back. Uh, it is the softer plastic, so um, it does bend a little bit here, there, and about, but uh, it fits pretty nicely, pretty good. Uh, the other th cool thing about the pack is um, for these crazy landmine things, it does have a place on each side where you can attach these, and they just peg in there like that. So, 
one peg on each side. And hold the bombs pretty easily. Then the other two you can uh, just attach to themselves so you end up getting four on there without it looking too weird. But if you wanted to you could also just uh, put these two extra ones inside the pack and they fit fairly well. So nice little storage container. Then the other accessory he has is this uh, submachine gun which is a pretty cool weapon. And he can hold it pretty easily. Nothing too crazy about it. If I can get it to go on here the first time. And it stays in his hands pretty well. So that's pretty cool. I like that particular gun. Has a nice look to it. So yeah, that is the Elite Horseman. Um, nothing too special about it, but uh, it works. It works pretty well. And the uh, nice blue metallic color on his costume is uh, pretty cool. So overall, not a bad figure. And here we have the two figures side by side for comparison. So you can tell they're pretty much the same height. The uh, Elite Horseman may have just a slight height advantage over Mr. Chuckles here. Uh, but overall it's pretty much standard. And then just for comparison's sake, we have our handy dandy beachhead figure from the 25th anniversary line. And as you can see, they are all in scale with it. So no worries about it uh, fitting in with any of your other collection. Pretty cool. Overall, not a bad set. And here we have the entire set together in one shot here. Uh, so you can see the figures in relation to their individual vehicles. The Foe Striker with Chuckles and the Basilisk Cobra vehicle with the Elite Horseman here. So pretty comparable in size and overall it's a it's a nice looking set so that is our review for the G.I. Joe 50th anniversary desert duel box set comes with this very cool basilisk snowcat repaint and the uh, elite horseman figure and the really cool looking uh, foe striker which is the AWE revision and the very cool Chuckles figure. Um, again, this was available. This is the retail set here. So the retail set gets a enthusiastic thumbs up. Uh, it's a little pricey for what it is. Uh, I think it's around 50 bucks or so, thereabouts, depending on where you're at. Um, I don't have a problem with that price myself. Um, I probably wouldn't pick up a second one. At that price, if they got discounted, definitely pick up two sets. But uh, the one set... Is enough for me. The two figures that are included are very awesome. Uh, the Chuckles figure specifically, some of the skin tones are off, but other than that, it's a cool figure. The Elite Horseman's cool. There is also the uh, SDCC exclusive version of this, which has two extra figures. Um, I don't know if it would be worthwhile to pick up that extra set just for the two extra figures. I may try to pick the figures up loose and uh, go from there, but um, considering the price of those SDCC exclusives, it's probably not worth picking it up when you can get the retail set that has the exact same vehicles and two of the four figures. Uh, yeah, go with the retail set. It's a much better value right now. So that's pretty much it for us today. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave us some comments below if you have something to say. Subscribe to your channel if you haven't already. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future, and uh, look out for more awesome videos coming down the pipe soon. Till next time, happy collecting, and yo Joe.